Hi, welcome to Walking with Jesus. This is a devotional journey through books of the Bible, a ministry of Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. I'm Jason Van Bemmel. Well, we're in day 34 of our journey through the book of Hebrews, and we're in the middle of chapter 10. A beautiful section, one of my favorite sections of the book of Hebrews, is this middle part of chapter 10. So we're going to be looking today at verses 15 to 22 and asking this question, how can we have confidence in our salvation. Let's hear the word of God. Hebrews chapter 10, 15 to 22. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places through the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's Hebrews 10, 15 to 22 in the English Standard Version. You know, not all confidence is created equal. There's a world of difference between true confidence and false confidence. False confidence is the Chihuahua's assurance that he can take down the Rottweiler, sometimes known as Little Dog Syndrome, it's a false confidence indeed, but true confidence is something different. It's, it's not boastful or brash, but it's secure and peaceful. True confidence is my daughter jumping off the couch at me knowing I will catch her. So how can we have a true confidence in our salvation before the Lord? Better still, how can we have peace knowing that the confidence we have is true and not false? Last time we rejoiced in the truth that if we are being sanctified, it is because we have already been made perfect by Christ's sacrifice. We experience ongoing sanctification because our sanctification is secure and complete in Jesus. But how do we know if what we're experiencing is really sanctification and not just hypocrisy, false religion, or self-confidence, or self-deception even? Well, Hebrews 10 gives us a sure sign, something which is so strong that it almost becomes a definition of what it means to experience sanctification. When God saves us, bringing us to himself by the power of the Holy Spirit, he writes his law on our hearts. This is the promise. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. To have God's law written on our hearts and minds means to have our consciences aligned with the Word of God by the Spirit of God. In other words, we are deeply grieved over our sin, we truly desire righteousness, and we agree with the holy standard God sets in His Word for defining righteousness and sin. It doesn't mean we don't sin but it means we truly hate our sin and desire to please God in obedience to his word. Perfectly? No, but sincerely. So those who have God's law written on their hearts have a true confidence before God, a holy boldness to enter the very presence of God in prayer and worship through the blood of Jesus. Notice how our confidence for access is only through Jesus. It's not a confidence grounded in our experience of having God's law written on our hearts. Our confidence doesn't come from our own sincerity, even if it is a true spirit-given sincerity. Because of Jesus, and because of Jesus alone, we have God's law written on our hearts, and we can draw near with full assurance of faith, knowing we are washed clean. We can come through our great high priest knowing we are truly redeemed, deeply loved, and warmly welcomed.